I always keep telling people that part five is a crazy part, crazy chapter, okay? Because this is a parallel computing class, but not very parallel, okay? Uh, it's based on the design of fork, okay? Because fork allows you to run process in parallel, and can we use fork, use some other things, so that we can bring about some performance gain, or even allow different process to compute something and add key together, give you something more, okay? So, uh, there is a class of algorithm, we call it, uh, maybe you didn't heard of it, distributed, distributed, not distributed system, distributed algorithms, okay? So this class of algorithm is emphasizing on what I just said. Different process distribute in the world, okay? They do some little thing, I do some little thing, you do some, you do some little thing, and applicate together, they produce some, we call it emerging effects, okay? Give you something about a big picture. Or, uh, nowadays, uh, we don't talk about this guy, we talk about other things like uh, uh, eventual consistency. It's also about some server do something, some server do something, whether we can get a consistent view of a system, okay? So you will eventually need this keyword, okay? If you know this keyword, I think you will have a very good interview uh, impression to your interviewer because this is a very important keyword when you're working in the, working with the AWS S3 system. How many of you know what's S3? No one else? Okay, Google it, okay? S3 system is uh, storing photos. Uh, Dropbox is using S3. Entire Dropbox is on S3. And S3 has this top tips. Okay, yeah, forget about this uh, consistency. Okay, go back to the IBC. IBC now, I confine my environment to be within my operating system only. It's not about a cross network, okay? It's only inside your operating system. What can I do? So. This is a very good diagram, okay? This diagram tells you one very important fact is there can be resources share among processes. Let's say I have one originally one process, then I open a file and do a fork, okay? I have already told you that after the fork, this file, open file status will be shared by these two processes, so that this process, these two processes can read and write at the same time, okay? And there is no control. What does the mean of no control? The operating system think that the control is on your side. You set up the control, okay? So what is the control? Let's say, while I'm reading, I don't want anyone to write. Let's say this is the control. Or while I'm reading, I allow and other people to write and to read, okay? So because read is read only, right? And I, I don't need to block another reader, okay? So how can you guarantee this kind of protocol? The protocol, protocol is not level protocol. It's the agreement among the processes. This is the agreement, right? I just said, if you are a reader, I will share the reading rights with you. If you are a writer, I will block you for whatever reason, I'm a writer there, of course I will block you if you want to write. I'm a reader, I also want to block you if you want to write. Because you are destroying what I'm reading. Okay, or the writer, writer versus writer. I'm writing, then you will destroy my rights. If you have learned database, you will have heard of this locking problem, okay? And in operating system, there is no protection. You are the one who set up this protocol, okay? And what is the meaning of you are the one who set up the protocol? You can call system call to protect it, but it is on the application. Your application call a system call, then the protocols turn on. If your application don't call the system call, the application is not protecting the share, let's say the hard disk, the share resources. Okay? If you're interested, the system call is named F lock. Oh, sorry, not make this man. Manage lock. 
no I need I need system conversion okay applying or remove uh, it's called advisory lock okay or I should say the file lock okay F lock means file lock okay so you can implement file lock over files but it's up to you you call it then protection turn on you didn't call it the operators system don't give a damn over it I'm oh, sorry you call it okay but don't give a dude over it okay so yeah then what is the operating system operating system only give you the utility you use it good you don't use it then your problem okay so now we first will start to understand what are the resources that we can share and how file is definitely one of the shared resources that we can share among processes okay because you don't just need to do file you can allow different process just open that file right you can write different processes different program open the same file over it and they just share the file no problem okay so this is a very easy way to understand it and also we were going to understand even though we have this mechanism to share resource files what is the problem maybe there's no problem that's good yeah this these chapters can can be chopped off okay if there's no problem of course there are problems okay and those problem is very unlikely to be happen okay usually uh, if you have a wrong implementation 99% of the case you run it don't have any problem only 1% usually is during the time you demonstrate okay you do a demonstration over your tutor in front of your boss then the problem very fast so usually it's like that I don't know why okay I have I should be have some bad benefit here over your your program huh? okay so let's do it so this is the basics okay the normal pipe that you use okay uh, I didn't know whether you have used it a lot okay but uh, for myself I use it a lot LS pipe less what is that what is the meaning of LS pipe less previous uh, demonstration or illustration that I told you is this process run and produce some standard output ship all the data to the next process and so that next process will treat it as a standard input so it's to ship output to input so this is the pipe okay so actually pipe is a shared resource between these two guys okay or how come they can connect together now I want to disclose to you what is the internal working of pipe and then I can explain to you one very famous implementation of IPC model we call it producer consumer model this model also happened in networking program okay when you write network program you always face this uh, producer consumer model okay so let's go ahead uh, there is some system call that you can cover your eye and don't 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 take a look at it because uh, supposed to be the old assignment okay the dupe 2 system call the pipe system call they are all from the old assignment okay I can talk about the flow the flow that the shell is executing the LS pipe less is actually doing the fork twice call fork once create LS call fork another one create less okay and how they can connect together of course the shell has to also create something for these two guys and the thing that is being created is a pipe okay and there is a system call called pipe main two pipe okay so already tell you it's called create pipe okay so it's a pipe system call now the pipe system call create a pipe and these two guys can see the pipe and what are the remaining calls here okay the execute you know what it is okay when you do a fork you need to execute so that it becomes ls execute is become less the dupe 2 is something extra that you don't need to know okay the dupe 2 if you are interested in it means that i will point the stand output so that it won't go to the screen it will go to the pipe here the dupe 2 is 
You won't wait from the keyboard, LS, pipe less, the less usually is read from the keyboard, but with the pipe, you will read from the pipe. So there is an action from this LS writing data to the pipe, and this guy will reading data from the pipe so that we can stream data from one process to another. Okay? So this is the setup. Now, after I have set up, I know that this guy is shared resource, and inside the kernel, is being implemented in this way. Now we go to the data structure problem. Okay, so this is the uh, what we call a bound buffer, or uh, what can what have, what what are you talking about? What what what, what you name a bound buffer? I always call it bound buffer. It's a limited queue or a bound queue, a queue with a length limit. Okay, that is a uh, you don't implement it as a linked list. Okay, you implement a linked list, then the queue is a kind of infinite, kind of. Okay. Uh, you even as an array, then the queue is limited, right? Because the array you initialize is, let's say, 100 slots, okay? Now, this model, what is that? This guy create a pipe as if you're creating a buffer inside the kernel. This LS, okay, so maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. Let's try. Uh, I go to here. So, original LS is so huge, okay? So LS pipe less is to shift this output to less and become the output something like this. Okay? Or I can change the command pipe LPR, this is a printer command, so that I will send something to the printer, but I don't have a printer here, so nothing will happen. Okay. So inside the kernel there is a share buffer between these two guys. And this guy will try to write data into this buffer. This guy will try to dequeue from this buffer so that it can read. Okay? And why I choose Q as a data structure? Because this guy, let's say, write a message one, two, three. You don't expect that this guy receives something uh, three, two, one, or one, three, one, okay? But one, two, three again. So I have to guarantee the order of the data that I write in this queue. And this guy will decode it as an FI4 manner. OK. So what I'm going to ask you, you ask yourself what will happen. So this is the queue implemented as an array. So you have limited space. You have limited space. Now the problem that I want to ask is, this guy is limited. What if? Yeah, yeah, this is the IE, IE problem. IE has a course called Curing Theory, okay? <laughs> what is, yeah, yeah, someone is taking it. Yeah. This guy, the producing rate, producing rate is much higher than this guy's consumption rate. So this produce at a faster rate than this guy. And this buffer is limited. What will happen? What? Lock. Lost. Okay, so from a network point of view, we were lost. Okay, this router problem, right? But kernel don't allow you to lose something. Okay? So, that means this will become full. This producing rate is faster than this guy. Become full. Now, how can I guarantee that you don't lose anything, but this program will keep on running? Okay, so let you to see the result. I can go to do the following. Uh, so what is this command? This command is keep on reading the hard disk recursively from the root directory. So you will keep printing out things non like non-stop, okay? So let's say I do a pipe and this command, the last, is not fast enough. Okay, will the entire system has a problem? Usually it's not. The entire system should not be frozen, should not say that, oh, you are too going too fast, I want to kill you. Usually it's not like that. Okay, so when this becomes full, the operating system, the kernel, will do some control. The control is, I have a 
it's not not above my mind. Okay. Yes. The the cell recording is here. Okay. Yeah, it's not above my my parts of it. <laughs> so here, you keep on printing something, but the buffer is full. The operating system will tell this guy to shut up. You should stop. Until when? Because this guy, the consumption rate is slow. So, but slow, then you will eventually clean up some space. When space appear, this guy will soon. So that you can guarantee the flow again. Unlike the router, router scenario, router cannot say that two endpoints, okay? Uh, the source, uh, you are saying too fast, okay? Oh, I know. Run out of battery, yeah. Okay. So the the source, you should shut up, okay? But router cannot do it, okay? Router, what the router can do it is to drop tail, okay? But here we don't drop tail, okay? We will ask this guy to shut up. Now, how about in another scenario? Another scenario is the producing rates or the arrival rate is smaller than the consumption rate. The consumption side is faster than the producer. Then what will happen? This guy slower, this guy faster. So, how about the buffer? Yeah, mostly empty. Keep on empty, mostly empty. And there will be time that, now come back to your data structure course. The data structure course tell you the following. What happened if you call the DQ function and the DQ is like, the length of the queue is zero? The data structure course then tell you what to do. Okay, they usually tell you that ah, oh, print an error, okay, or return minus one, uh, return false, okay, or just kill the program. Kernel won't do it, okay. You DQ, and when you DQ, you find the queue length is zero. This guy is this time is not shut up, but block. You sleep for some time. You sleep for some time. Until when? Until this guy start producing things and in queue inside this buffer. Now this is the op op the cooperation between NQ and DQ. When NQ find that the queue was empty, that means there is a chance that this guy is sleeping. Wake him up. Send him a sick con. Sick continuation signal. Wake him up. The reverse. This guy tried to end queue, but the queue is full. So this guy go to sleep, and when this guy try to dequeue, and find that oh, the, when I dequeue, the queue was full. That means there is a chance that this guy is sleeping. Send him second to let him to continue to run. And this is the basic model so that these two guys can keep on surviving producing something and this guy can consume something without any problem. Okay? And what is the original problem? The original problems come from here. This guy has limited space. Okay? If this guy so if this guy has infinite space, then we will cut off half of the problem. Why I say that cut off half the problem? What happens if I have in infinite space here? This side, keep on enqueuing, any problem? No. How about this guy? Keep on decuding, any problem? Yes. Eventually, you will decue and find it empty. Right? Don't ignore this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's not. Okay? You will decue and find it, oh, empty. Okay? So it means infinite space doesn't mean infinite supply. Okay? So this guy will eventually have another chance to block. But this guy no longer block if the queue is infinite. Okay? So back to networking, networking has this, has this implementation. Let's imagine that this is a buffer and this is from a multiple network, network connections, and you are implementing BT. Yeah, you're implementing BT. So different processes Different processes mean different peer connection. Yo, you know what is BT, right? BT is connected to different peers, download things parallelly, right? Now, you should have an aggregate point of data. The point that aggregate will be something like this. 
a finite buffer that for temporary storage and who will eventually save the data will be this consumer. This consumer will consume this block and find it, ah, oh, this is a, a file block 123. I put a location 123. The next block, oh, the file block uh, 666. Okay, put it on 666. Okay, so usually it's like that in, let's say you implement BT. Multiple producer, single consumer. First consumer is the one who write the file. You won't expect their parallel process of writing file, huh? unless you have parallel process writing to different locations. If I'm talking about one location, then you will have only one guy, but you won't say that I only have one network connection. Then it's not BT, it's a file transfer, FTP, okay? So this is the, uh, what we call it, I've missed the dot here, the link is here. Producer consumer model, okay? And another model uh, I will keep to uh, uh, give it in the next lecture is how to implement parallel quicksort based on fault and based on the properties of quicksort. Okay, I don't give you code. You can think of think for yourself how to make quicksort in running in parallel. Okay. So uh, later on, we will tell you how to implement this, okay? Uh, oh, by the way, I want to ask you for something.